Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to Bonus Weather Video 2 for this week. And uh, I've changed my background. This is a infrared image of Hurricane Katrina just before it made landfall in uh, Louisiana. And uh, that's quite an impressive image, isn't it? Amazing stuff. All right, so today we're going to talk about ensembles. And uh, this is one of those things where it's a little bit difficult to explain, but I'm going to do my best to <coughs> have it make sense for you. And uh, the one thing I can assure you right off the bat is that we're not talking about this type of ensemble at all, okay? That's a whole different ballgame. And those are lots of fun as well. But uh, the idea behind ensembles is that we cannot observe the atmosphere perfectly. We've made great strides in the last few decades. Uh, lots of remote sensing, satellites, radar, all that stuff going into the models and making the forecast better and making the analysis better. But it's still not perfect. We don't have observations at every square inch of the planet. And so what we try to do with ensembles is say, OK, we know that the analysis is flawed to a small degree, but still flawed, and that those errors are going to increase with time as you go out into the future. So let's change the analysis just a little bit to 30 different extents and see how sensitive the atmosphere is to those changes. If over a course of three or four or five days, all the solutions of all 30 members are similar, that gives you high confidence in the forecast. It tells you that the atmosphere is not all that sensitive to those small imperfections at the beginning. But if the solutions are all over the place in three or four or five days, then that is a very low confidence forecast. It tells you that the atmosphere is very sensitive to any changes at the very beginning. So let me go on ahead here and show you, uh, not the uh, orchestra again, but what we call a spaghetti plot. And I do want to warn you, never look at a spaghetti plot late at night. Why? Because it's pasta your bedtime. Okay, so think of these lines here, the blues and the reds, as isobars in the upper atmosphere. And notice how they're all very, very tightly packed. And so, again, the changes we're making with those 30 members are very, very small. Okay, it's just saying if we tweak this just a little bit, then this is where it's going to land. Okay, so let's move on ahead 24 hours here. And you'll notice the blue lines are still very tightly packed together. The red lines are starting to diverge a little bit. And by the time we get to 48 hours, the blue lines are still fairly tight together, but the red lines look like a finger painting exercise. And what it's telling us is that the ridge in the upper atmosphere, there's a little bit of uncertainty as to how strong that ridge is going to be. All right, let's advance the clock to 72 hours. Again, most of the spread is with the red lines. And that looks a little bit more cohesive, but notice the blue lines are starting to diverge a little bit right, right now. And by hour 120, we start to see the blue lines pretty close together here, but varying quite a bit here. Now, there are indications that we're into a pattern change in the upper atmosphere and that we're going to have a trough developing in eastern North America. But the question is, how deep is that trough going to be? If it's up here, the chance of that cool air getting to North Carolina is very, very small. If it's all the way down here, then the chances are very good that we'll see substantial relief in about five or six days. So again, Quite a bit of uncertainty there, especially over the eastern part of North America. Okay, we move on to hour 144, and now with the red lines, it is just utter chaos. Uh, basically, uh, the ensembles are all over the place, and the uncertainty in terms of how strong the ridge is going to be is very, very high. And uh, again, by hour 168, a week from now, pretty much the same thing. Now, you can also use ensembles to give you the probability of precipitation exceeding certain thresholds. So let's take a look at this. This is actually for this afternoon, and North Carolina is right in here, okay? Now, notice that the probabilities are eh, up around 80% in the mountains of greater than 0.01 inches, which is the definition of measurable rainfall, just barely enough to change the color of the pavement, and about, uh, oh, 50% along the coast, but a glaring minimum in between, and that's exactly what we're seeing so far uh, today. Now, let's move on ahead here and take a look at the probability of greater than a tenth of an inch of rain. Notice, again, just about zero in the middle of the state, still about 50% in the mountains and along the coast. 
By the time we get to 0.25 inches or more, only the outer banks have even a 10 to 20 percent chance of exceeding that threshold. And by the time we get to a half an inch, virtually zero chance across the entire state. You can do the same thing with snowfall amounts, like the probability of measurable snow may be 90 percent, but then if the probability of one inch of snow is 10 percent, that's telling you that there's a good chance we'll see flakes but a very small chance that it's going to amount to anything really, really big. And how do you compute those probabilities? Well, you basically just look at how many members are above a certain threshold. So let's say um, that eight out of the, I'm sorry, uh, let's say 20, 20 out of the 30 members indicate that there's going to be an inch or more of snow. Then that would be a 67% chance or 66.67777 chance of, uh, of that threshold being exceeded. And so that's how that probability is calculated. So I hope that gives you a little bit of insight as to how ensembles are useful as opposed to putting all your eggs in the basket of one deterministic model. By taking the ensemble approach, it gives you a much better idea as to the potential error in the forecast and the potential volatility in the forecast. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you found that educational. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, actually, I'm going to post a daily weather update in a couple of hours, and then we'll be back Monday with another daily weather update. The next bonus weather video will be coming up next Tuesday. We'll see you then. Happy weekend.